fact, we're at Lark's Radio Control Club and they're doing pylon racing today. This is a formal event. They've got a competition. They've got judges. They're timing everybody. They've got to do their laps. I'm going to get you an interview a little later to explain what's going on, but they're getting ready to race. So here we go. I can hear the motors going. They're getting ready to launch. And man, these things are quick. Here they go. I can see them. Here they go. I can see them. There they go. Oh, what happened? He just hit the pile on. Oh, did he? <laughs> oh, man. Boy, they're moving. That is hard to track. All right, motors are off. They're dead sticking now. There it is, there he is, there he is, dead stick. Oh, <laughs> he went over. Whoops. Oh, here comes the other guy. Oh, I missed him. I got that one though. I'll tell you what, it's hard to track that, man. We're way back. I came way back from the flight line because I wanted to try and get as much in frame as I could, but boy, they're moving. It is definitely a challenge to track that. There they go. <laughs> Man. Well, that one went a little wide. Oh, I think that guy just got lapped. This guy in the bottom is fast. He's already been lapped once. Oh, has he? Tim said he's already been lapped one time. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened there? Oh, they're killing it. So when they land, they dead stick. That guy has power off and he's gonna come around into the wind and land. Oh, there he is. He's still moving quick. Very cool, very cool stuff. And there's another crash. That one went in right at the end. We didn't catch that on film, but <laughs> they, they seem to uh, they seem to put them in from time to time in this event. Yep, here they go. Looks like only two of them this time. Now look at that, they're in knife edge pretty much the whole time. <laughs> they're close too. Woo, yeah they are. 
Man, that's cool. Look how close they are. That's like NASCAR up there. They're trading paint. That guy's got a good line, man. Yeah, he's maintaining his altitude and he's zipping around pretty good. Not a lot of wasted movement there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, straight up. So I guess he completed and then they, they go straight up to kill. I don't, man, I completely lost him when he did that. There he is. Yeah, I got him. Oh, that's a bird. <laughs> I thought I had him. There he is. All right, there he is. Let's see if we can catch a landing. Oh, 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 oh he got it. <laughs> nice landing. Where's the other guy? There he is. Nice, 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 nice. Cool. That was cool. Neat. No crashes that time. All right, looks like the next heat is heading out. The next round of planes getting ready to go in the air. All right, here we go. This is gonna be the last recorded heat and then we're gonna get you guys an interview. So here we go, they're getting ready to launch. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Go. Oh, these planes are a little brighter. They're a little easier to track. I think that guy just came in underneath the orange one and passed him. Looks to me like they're battling. Man, knife edge the whole time. It seems like if they want to pass, they go high. Because that guy in the orange, he's passing people and he keeps going pretty high. He launches. I'm not sure if that's uh, normal or not, but that's what it seems like he's doing. And up, up they go. That's when I lose them, man. You can't follow that. There he is. So he's motor off and he's dead stick right now. They launch when they're done. They go basically straight up to bleed off that speed. And then they come around to make their landing. He's hot, man. He's coming in high and fast. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> well, he stuck the landing. That guy seems like he's got some skill there. <coughs> there he is. All right, here's another one. All dead stick right here. Nice landing. Very good. Cool stuff. I've got a little interview with Greg, who is the race director for today's event. Greg's also local to Lark, so he's uh, one of the officers of the club, and he's going to talk us through a little bit about some of the rules and some of the planes and kind of a little bit about how this pylon racing deal works. So, Greg, Tell us about the event. What what was the deal with the event? Sure. So so we there are different classes in pylon racing. Today we ran what's called the 426, which is an intermediate class. Um, three pylons out on the out on the uh, course. We take off in the center of the course, ten laps around uh, to complete the race. 
if they do cut a pylon, cut turn inside the pylon, there's a, a cut flag thrown, a light lights up for them, they have to fly an 11th lap. So that's the penalty for a single cut. A double cut, you're out of, you're at, you get zero points for that, for that race. Okay. Uh, we flew five rounds today. Uh, again, 21 pilots, three planes at a time. Um, and uh, we did have some damage today, which is <laughs> typical in, in this sport. Uh, but I wanted to show you some of the different classes because you, you'll see we're, we're going to show some flying of some of the faster classes, but there are some entry level classes as well. Uh, so the first plane I have here is the EF1, the Electric Formula One class, uh, one of the entry level classes, several ARFs that fit in that category, uh, flying on a four cell battery, uh, relatively standard uh, equipment. The next one over is 424, uh, which was the entry level Quickie 500 class. It's typically a glow class. There's now provisional rules for electric, and that is an electric setup you see there, also flying on four cells. Uh -huh. 426 is what we flew today, and that usually flies on the jet engines uh, quick, faster than the, the standard Quickie 500. And then this is a 422, which is what we'll be flying tomorrow. That's when you start getting into the composite fuselage. That's the white one with the V-tails of 422. The white one with the V-tail, okay, right. And that's got a Nelson engine in it. Uh, those, those, will, those will be in speeds of well over 100 miles an hour going around the course. Uh, we're also going to have a demo flight of one of the FAI classes. We, we did time trials here at Tavares in November uh, for the U.S. World Team. And one of those planes is, is here today as well, and he'll fly a demo flight for us. Those will pass 200 miles an hour going around the course. Wow. Uh, and they, so there's a shorter course we use today. There's a slightly longer course tomorrow. The FAI course is a little bit wider at the base. They just go to kilometers, meters instead of feet. It makes the base a little bit lar larger for the international competition. Uh, we had a great time out here today. Our first and second place uh, pilots were separated by a less than a tenth of a second. That's close uh, racing. Uh, that <laughs> so they tied in points and fast time decided the race and their fastest time was a tenth of a second wow. apart. Wow. Uh, so a lot of fun out here. We'll be out here again tomorrow uh, flying the 422 class. And uh, if you got questions about Pylon, NMPRA is the special interest group. Uh -huh. NMPRA.net is, is their website. Okay. Uh, welcome to reach out to, to them there uh, or certainly on, on LarksRC, LarksRCClub.com. Uh, for Larks, you can reach out to us as well. Cool. How much do these planes cost? Like on average, I know there'll be wild, you know, professional they were, they were, high-end planes. I know I got that, but but you know, what what could someone start with? Yeah. So so in the the entry level class, uh, typical airplanes, you're in the five you're in the five hundred to six hundred seven hundred dollar range. There are some better servos in them, um, but they're they're relatively typical. You get into the composite fuselages in the four two two. The cost clearly does go up. Yeah. Uh, you pay a thousand dollars for the airframe. Uh, the wow. FAI class is, again, an another step up there. Wow. Um, I mean, to fly truly competitive in FAI, it it's five figures. Uh, for, the for the planes you need, the practice, the, the, the fuel, the parts. Uh, and they're traveling to the Netherlands this year to compete. Wow. Um, so when you get into the FAI class, it cer certainly is a, st a step up in cost. Well, these uh, guys are dedicated then. <laughs> they, are, they are dedicated. There was, uh, I think we had nine of them out here competing for four spots on the team uh -huh. uh, last year. Um, and some very competitive flying, some very good flying out there. Okay. How does a, like, just walk us through a, like a heat. So they, they get ready to launch, they've got a spotter out there, there's judges on the course. So how does that work? Like, what are the logistics of a, of a heat? Sure. So at the start finish line, we, we have an official running the race. Uh -huh. uh, they, the, each pilot does have a spotter with them. They, they launch the plane for them. So they'll get the plane started. The pilots will go back to about pylon two area to fly from. Uh huh. When the, the countdown hits zero, it's a staggered start, lanes one and three, then lane two, uh, so, and that alternates between, between rounds. So they'll launch the planes and the spotters will run back to them. The judges at turn one do two things. They're, lo for, they're looking, first of all, obviously for a cut if they turn inside, but they also have a button to press when they pass the pylon. Uh, so the callers are looking for that or anticipating and timing that and telling the pilot when to turn for turn one. The pilot will then take it around two and three, back to turn one, and again, the caller is helping them pace the time between turn three and turn one. Okay. So, so you hear a one, two, ready, turn quite often uh -huh. from, from the spotter, trying to get them ready and trying to pace when they're going to be past pylon one. Okay. Obviously, the tighter you run the course, the lower you run the course, you have to be at least at the top of the pylons, but if you can keep a consistent line down low, you, you've got a faster time. And there's a certain number of laps they're supposed Ten to? Laps Ten is, laps is the standard race. If you have a cut, an extra lap. If you have two cuts, you're out. And they're racing the <laughs> clock mainly, but 
the results are you know the the slow the fast time wins right uh for these are they're racing each other so it's the three it's the up to three planes that are flying at a time you can fly four we typically fly three at our race okay uh it's the, the fast first one that crosses the fast time was the tiebreaker okay. okay so they get four points for first place three points for second two points for third gotcha. one point for fourth if you're flying four planes um and the points add up throughout the day and these guys, you mentioned something about the airplane wing and the ailerons being a little bit different. So on like the shoestring, uh, typical aileron setup, but on the faster ones, a little bit different. Yeah, on, on the faster ones and on, on the FAI also, there's a cut on one side and it's really twisting the wing for the other side. So it's not a standard aileron. It really is just a little bit of a cut and then a twist of the wing to make it turn. And they're setting up the elevator throw. So typically, so that a full elevator throw will get them around two and three. Uh, at, at the right pace. Right. Um, so it's a very little amounts of throw. They'll obviously switch that for landing to, to a different rate to give yeah. them a little more to land. Yeah. Uh, the landings, obviously, except for electric, they are dead stick. So at the end of the laps, uh, the, the, it's on and off. There's no carburetor on them. It, it's a Venturi and uh, a, cut, a fuel cutoff. So they can cut the fuel if they need to, or they run out of fuel and they have to glide around and land. And they do land fast, so they're, they're trying to bleed off speed. We had a very windy day today. Uh, did make some of the landings a little bit challenging. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little interesting. <laughs> and uh, I assume too. the fuel amount they carry is really designed for 10 laps. That's about it, right? Designed for the 11, in case 11, you got to do the 11, extra okay. lap. Yeah, okay. and they are measuring the fuel by the ounces with it and, and putting it in the plane. It's, it's FAI fuel, it's, it's, it's zero nitro. Wow. Uh, in the FAI class, it's, it's a higher nitro in the lower classes. Um, so the fuel varies also based on what they're doing. Cool. <clears throat> All and right. We provide well, the fuel. The race provides the fuel, so everybody's using the same, same fuel. fuel. Uh, there are restrictions, obviously, on the engines, the displacement, yeah. uh, and as in the different areas. In the lower classes, there are pre-approved setups. These are the motors that are allowed. These the batteries within a certain weight. Um, so, and what airframes are allowed as well for each class. Right. Very cool. All right, so you've arranged a demo flight for us. It's going to be, tell us a little bit about what, this, yep. what we're going to see. So Matt Felling is going to fly his F3D plane. Uh -huh. uh, this is the FAI class, so this is the faster class. He's just getting it ready for you now. Uh, they do exceed 200 miles an hour going around the course. Uh, Matt will be making the trip to the to the world team next with the, with the world team wow. uh, out to the Netherlands. So this um, guy's legit. He knows what so he's doing. Th th we've got some good flyers here. We actually had the world record holder for F3D was here flying today as well. Wow. Uh, that's Randy Bridge holds the current world record. Wow! Wow! So. Wow! Wow! Very cool. Well, hey Greg, thanks for taking the time to explain it to us. I appreciate that. Uh, RC Video Reviews viewers, I know will appreciate it as well. It's one of these other branches of the hobby you just don't see that much out there on. So I'm really excited to bring and, and this out. Honestly, until I moved to Florida, I was not heavily, I was not involved in Pylon. We didn't have field, I was never at a field with the space to run the yeah, event. Yeah. You do need quite a bit of space. The, ju uh, the judges and all the spectators were 300 feet off of the course. Right. So you need that amount of separation uh, for safety. Uh, we did have some planes uh, impact the pylons today and the debris field, it stayed within the safety area as it's supposed to. Um, but it was it was spread out a bit. Well, some of the best filming I got was back there on the road. That's how far back I had to be, and I zoomed a little yep. bit to track them. They're moving that fast. Yep, they're so, moving fast. Yeah. And that was the the intermediate class you were filming earlier today. So <laughs> cool. the, the, the F3D will be, a, will be a lot faster. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time, Greg. Appreciate it. Can't wait to see the demo flight. We're about to get a demo flight of an F, FAI, F3, FAI, FAI, FAI plane. And this is Matt. Matt's going to fly it for us. Tell us about your plane, Matt. So this is a A1 Composites Vector. Uh, the aircraft itself is made in Australia. The engine's an MB Profi. They're manufactured in the Ukraine and actually sold in the Netherlands. Uh, it has onboard ignition glow. We run 0% nitro. The onboard ignition glow is actually made in Sweden. Uh, propeller in Australia. All JR Propo uh, electronics throughout. They'll do well over 200 miles an hour on 0% nitro on a really good day. Uh, usually here in the USA, the only time you'll see them flown is once every two years at the team trials for the World Championships and then the World Championships. So three guys from the USA make it. Those are the three guys that represent our country and uh, fight for that World Championship. Nice. And there, the, where are the World Championships this year? World Championships this year will be in August in the Netherlands. Netherlands. Got three guys going. One guy's a local club member here and former world champion, Randy Bridge. Uh -huh. Other two guys are uh, West Coast guys, Gino Del Pani and AJ Hempkin. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Well, I can't wait to see this, man. I missed it earlier. We had to leave, but I can't wait to see this thing go. So let's let's go. We're gonna make some noise in the speed. All right. <laughs> cool. So what? they're out. They're out at the launch pad right now, getting ready to fly. Uh, typically at the beginning of the race, once they get out there, uh, we check to make sure the controls are working on all the airplanes. They have a 60-second clock then to get the engine started, get everything tuned and ready. Have the spotter get back. Have the pilot and spotter get in position. 
But if you are out there with it, the loud, it is much louder. You do want ear protection in, in this class. It's loud and we're quiet a ways <laughs> off. I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see how far we are away just to capture the speed of these things. We're way back. So it looks like they're getting ready. There it goes. Yeah, he actually, he took off into the wind, which is actually downwind. Now he'll get on the course, just to give you an idea how fast they're flying. Holy smokes, <laughs> man. I lost him. <laughs> He's coming around. There, I got him. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Man, that is legitimately hard to keep in frame. <laughs> I've tried with my camera, I understand. And that and was 10 laps and up. That's straight up in the air. Man. Now, now he stood at the center to fly, so it, he was flying a little inside pylon two and three. Normally they stand back at pylon two, so he was flying as he normally would around him. Uh, which, so you did see it going inside pylon two and three, but he was just trying to give you an idea of the speed and what it takes. This is now dead stick. Now I can track him. <laughs> now you can track him. He's gonna go, he's gonna go long behind the shelter. He'll be, the shelter will be between us and him. Wow, that was really impressive. How fast do you say that was? They're over 200 miles an hour if, at full speed. Man. Now, in an actual race, he would have had to take off on the course, in, in, which would have been a downwind takeoff today. But uh, just for the demo, obviously, take off into the wind, preserve the airplane. And he's, he's going to, he, he landed over oh, there. Oh, yeah, he's yep. way over there. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm impressed, man. I did the best I could. <laughs> Half the I, I, time I just held the camera still and let it fly by. I will tell you, when we did the time trials, I stood out there with them and I was turning, watching them fly the plane. I don't know how they fly them that fast. The slower, the slower classes I can fly and keep up with, it is impressive, with, especially if you stand out there and see what they're doing. That was something <laughs> else. Very cool stuff. Well, Greg, thanks for, uh, appreciate the hospitality, getting, uh, getting that flight arranged for us, the demo. I appreciate that and all the information you just shared. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Good to see you. All right, that wraps up my video for Pylon Racing at Lark's RC Club in Florida. If you like this type of content, make sure you smash that thumbs up, hit the subscribe and notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right about now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and get out there and fly something. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.